Hello everyone, today we'll be going over exercise 7.13, Longest Sorted Sequence. The problem reads, write a method named Longest Sorted Sequence that accepts an array of integers as a parameter and that returns the length of the longest sorted, non-decreasing sequence of integers in the array. For example, if, if a variable named array stores the following values, 3, 8, 10, 1, 9, 14, negative 3, 0, 14, 207, 56, 98, and 12, then the call of longest sorted sequence array should return 4 because the longest sorted sequence in the array has 4 values in it, the sequence negative 3, 0, 14, 207. Notice that sorted means non-decreasing, which means that the sequence could contain duplicates. For example, if the array stores the following values, 17, 42, 3, 5, 5, 5, 8, 2, 4, 6, 1, 19, then the method would return 5 for the length of the longest sequence, the sequence 3, 5, 5, 5, 8. The, your method should return 0 if passed an empty array. So. Um, this problem, again, is pretty self-explanatory. We're just looking for the longest sequence of numbers that is already in order from um, smallest to largest. And it does say that um, the sequence is allowed to contain duplicates, so as long as the numbers just aren't decreasing. So let's go ahead and create our method header, public static, and because we will be returning a length, which is represented as an integer, um, our return type will be int. Let's go ahead and name it longest sorted sequence. Now, if we take a look, our method will be taking in the parameter um, of an array of integers. And we can go ahead and call this array. just as the examples do for us. And let's go ahead and get this first case out of the way your method should return zero if passed an empty array. And how can we check for an empty array? Well, we can check for an empty array by seeing if the length of the list is zero. So if the uh, length of the, sorry, I misspoke, if the length of the array is zero, not the list. So let's take a look. If the length of the array is zero, then the problem reads that we should return zero. So let's go ahead and write return zero. And from this point is the harder part where we have to figure out the longest chain of ordered numbers. So for this, I created one variable called count, and this would basically represent the length of numbers that uh, we're kind of just looking at uh, for now. Next, we want to create a for loop that's basically going to be looping from the beginning all the way to the uh, second to last. Now, why second to last? Uh, that's because uh, we're basically going to be checking um, the I guess, longest sequence. And there's a chance that uh, the, the longest sequence is the second to last number and then the last number. So we want to go um, to the second to last for that reason. So let's go ahead, create a for loop. And of course, we want to start from the beginning. And as I said, we're going to go all the way up uh, to the second to last one, which is why we're going to do list.length minus 1. And progress our for loop. Now, automatically, we're just first going to go ahead and increase count by one because we can kind of say that we've already looked at a number. Next, we want to check to see if the number following it is greater than, equal to, or less than. And that's because if it's less than, then we 
the sequence of numbers that we've looked at so far um, has to essentially be cut off because um, sorted means non-decreasing. So any number following um, whatever we were looking at shouldn't be uh, decreasing. So let's go ahead and check that. If the number following the uh, number we just looked at, the element following the element we just looked at, is less than the element we are currently looking at, what happens? Well, we're going to go ahead and actually create another variable called result. And this result variable is going to represent, I guess, the longest, um, longest sequence of numbers we have so far. So let's go ahead, change result. And result is going to be math.max result count. So what we're doing is we're taking the maximum of result and count. And the reason for that is because we're looking for that longest sequence, right? So either the sequence that we just looked at or the sequence that's already stored in result, which one's longer? And that's what this line is taking care of. Next, we're going to reset our count to zero. And the reason we're resetting our count to zero is because we're kind of resetting our sequence, right? So once you have a following number that's actually decreasing than the value before it, then you basically kind of want to start anew from that point on. And finally, we're going to take the result one more time. And this is because if, and then, oh, sorry, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and return result. So the reason that we take um, the maximum for the result at the very end one more time is because there's a chance that um, our sequence of numbers continues to increase all the way to the end. And if it increases all the way to the end, well, you'll notice that result is never changed from its initial value of zero because our result only changes when the next number is decreasing. But you'll notice if our sequence of numbers all the way, goes all the way to the end, there will not be a following number that is decreasing to stop um, this for loop and therefore uh, change our change our result from its in an initial value of zero, which is why we take the maximum at the very end. Now, for a, for that similar reason, we're also going to add count one more time, and that's because remember our for loop all the way goes to the second to last one, right? Um, and for that reason, it's not counting that last um, that last number which is why we do want to add count one more time to just account for that last element. And now if we press result, you should see that, oops, oops looks like I used the variable list uh, when we should have been using array. So let's go ahead and submit one more time. And you'll notice we pass all our tests. 